There are many ways that Texas leads the country. One of them is in how much methane we release into the atmosphere, a powerful source of pollution that's getting attention lately. A lot of that methane comes from here in West Texas, so I want to find out how bad is the problem and what are some of the solutions? Skyler White is a rancher and he's got a problem on his land that he wants me to see. Old leaky oil wells. He says the ride there can be a little bit bumpy. You going for it? We'll give it a shot. Oh. <laughs> I think we made it. <laughs> oh, he's a cool customer up there. When it comes to gases that trap in the sun's heat, carbon dioxide is the biggie. Our cars and power plants release massive amounts of it. Methane, we emit far less of, but it is far more effective at trapping heat. Over a 100 year period, the EPA says methane's impact on climate change can be 25 times greater than carbon dioxide's. Schuyler estimates on his property, there are 100 orphan wells. That's an old well that needs to be plugged to keep oil, methane, and other gases from coming up to the surface, but there's no longer a well operator on record to take responsibility. This is the worst orphan well on his property, with oil bubbling to the surface and a heavy stink of gas. You know, it's killing everything around here and, and it's poison. Yeah, it smells terrible. I mean, would you want to eat beef that comes from cattle that drink this crap? I think not, no. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's how I make my living. And check this out. An orphan well on a neighboring ranch is bubbling up with so much underground water, it formed a new lake, but not the kind you'd ever want to swim in. Air and water samples here found some gases at potentially lethal levels. How bad is the overall orphan well problem? A study from McGill University suggests abandoned oil and gas wells may be a top 10 source of methane emissions in the United States. Why is it that I have to spend my money and my time and my energy plugging your wells? Plugging orphan wells is the responsibility of the Texas Railroad Commission, and it's about to get $343 million in federal infrastructure funds to do more of that work. But Schuyler has told the commission that he's already spent $220,000 of his own money plugging wells that he says are the state's responsibility, not his. Yeah, I mean, it's just something we inherited. It's not, it's just something that's here and nobody really gave a damn. So this is the liability of Texans. Yeah, everybody. While orphan wells are a problem we inherited from long ago, the modern oil and gas wells being drilled today are a far larger source of methane, 25 times larger. So this is my instrument. This looks like just sort of a normal video camera. How much does that cost? $100,000 for this. $100,000? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sharon Wilson is an environmentalist. She documents methane emissions released into the atmosphere from the Permian Basin and frequently files complaints about them. We're headed to an oil and gas site where the oil and gas comes up from the ground and we're going to look at the pollution that comes out of these sites. Her specialized camera, also used by regulators and industry, can see methane. Whoa, holy moly, what in the world is that? Wow. So that's methane? The methane does not come up by itself. Uh -huh. It's mixed with other gases, benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, xylene. The camera's great because you can't, otherwise they can't see that. I mean, that is a huge cloud. Every one of these is emitting. One way to make methane less potent is equipment that burns it or flares it. But a NASA study of the Permian Basin found half of the biggest sources of methane emissions are likely to be malfunctioning oil field equipment. Oh, now the, they just turned it on. Just yeah. now, it came on. It won't stay on. They don't know how to operate this flare. This flare is flickering off and on. The camera shows it is burning some gas, but you can also see drifting off to the right, 
is a cloud of methane that escapes without ever combusting. But now it's out again. Now it's out. That was wild. Like while we were watching it, the flare came on and it was on for 30 seconds and now it's off. The EPA is proposing new rules on the oil and gas industry to reduce methane emissions. They would improve leak detection and repair and enhance the monitoring of and repair of flare malfunctions. Even when they have the latest technologies, they don't work consistently or at all. So um, we're, we're headed the wrong way really fast because methane is a super pollutant to, for the climate. Okay, well what you do is you pull all this pipe and you basically put cement down this hole and turn the hole into a giant rock. Stuart McDonald is the Director of Energy and Land Management at the University of Texas Permian Basin in Odessa, who also consults for the oil and gas industry. The number one way to stop flaring and stop venting is to come up with a way to get the gas to markets. And I'm talking about pipelines that get it to places that we could, we could use it. That's been a problem in the oil and gas industry since the 20s and 30s. More than 30% of U.S. oil and gas production comes from the Permian, but a study in the journal Science Advances found 3.7% of what's extracted is simply wasted. Midland Odessa, for example, does not need more natural gas, but much of the world does, but we don't have a way to get it there. It's horrible that we waste it because once it's gone, it's gone. The world's thirst for oil and gas is what drives climate change. On this trip, I learned the way we waste energy makes the problem worse. And solutions like cleaning environmental damage, regulating emissions, or building more pipeline just don't seem to match the scope of the problem. I'm David Schechter reporting.